This is our third lecture on particle systems. Uh, we began looking at simple motion of individual particles. So uh, we had position and velocity to update position. We applied gravitational force, which created acceleration that updated velocity to, to cause increasing velocity. Uh, that we applied damping and we applied bouncing uh, to get individual particles that behaved in kind of an interesting way. And then the second uh, little lecture looked at springs, so uh, a, a type of uh, connection between particles uh, that, would, that would cause some interaction. And today we're going to look at uh, mutual interaction, uh, which in a way is like springs. We're going to think about cases where uh, springs, imagine springs connecting every particle to every other particle. Um, that may seem absurd, but you know, in the real world, uh, we have gravity. Every, everything is exerting gravity on everything else in the universe. And uh, so, so there's a, a kind of a built-in physical connection between all objects and all particles. In uh, um, uh, particles with electrical charge, well, electrical fields have that have a similar property that um, if you have two charged particles, you know, balloons with static electricity, they'll either attract and stick together, or if they have the same charge, they'll uh, push each other, they'll push apart. And again, you have a situation of every particle um, exerting a force on every other particle. And the one big difference between that and springs is springs obey Hooke's law, which we talked about. And uh, this uh, sort of action at a distance, uh, mutual uh, gravitational attraction or electrical uh, charge-based uh, attraction, repulsion, is uh, based on an inverse square law. So we'll look at the inverse square law and implement something very simple. Now, again, rather than operating on many, many particles, which would require objects, and we'd have to define fields of those objects, and we'd have to put them in arrays, and we'd have to write for loops, and pretty soon you, you easily can get lost in, in all of that detail and miss how does this inverse square law and uh, uh, mutual interaction actually create force and how do you calculate that force. So we're going to do just one particle uh, that's acted on by the mouse position, mouse x, mouse y, and show how those forces are computed. And um, hopefully that will uh, help explain how the larger particle systems are working. So I have this sketch already set up. Uh, that, oops, let's load the program over here. Um, uh, the sketch just draws a circle in the center, but it's all set up with uh, x and y coordinates of the circle, x and y velocity of the circle. So in fact, we could, ignoring this commented line for the moment, uh, we can implement velocity just the way we did before. Uh, we just accumulate velocity into position. And now if we load this again, all right, we have velocity. Uh, what about damping? Let's put some damping in here. Say damping, okay, so this is motion. Damping, uh, we're gonna do uh, a uh, kind of half-baked damping but it should work. <laughs> We're going to just say that damping is proportional to the x and y velocity. And we'll load this. Ah, and so let me load it again. All right, so you see this, this uh, the speed is actually exponentially decreasing. Um, if we wanted to do something more realistic, uh, you know, earlier we talked about damping uh, at least aerodynamic damping tends to be proportional to the square of the velocity uh, rather than proportional to velocity, which is what we've got here. 
But we're going to skip that detail because I really want to focus on uh, this inverse square law. So what, is, what does inverse square law mean? It means that uh, action is related to the distance between two objects. I should say force is related. And so let's calculate the distance. We'll just use the P5JS distance function. Here's the distance from XY to mouse X, mouse Y. And what about force? So force is proportional to the inverse. That means 1 divided by the inverse of the square of the distance. Square just means something multiplied by itself. Um, so that's this is 1 over the square of the distance. And, you know, and it's proportional. So we don't know that this number is 1. It's related to the amount of charge or the gravitational constant or the, the units of measurement. Uh, it's, it's just a factor. And, and in these simulations, we often just adjust the factor to get results that are pleasing. So uh, I'm going to pump up that number to make sure that we see it. Uh, that the force is big enough to have some effect. And now we want to uh, decompose that force into an x component and a y component because then we want to apply the force by saying uh, pxv plus equals the force in the x direction and the y velocity accumulates force in the y direction. All right, so that's our, that's, uh, that's basically our program, except we haven't figured out how to turn this overall force into two directions. And I drew some pictures. We actually did this um, in, the, in the previous lecture, but uh, probably wasn't explained very well. Uh, I, I know I glossed over it quickly, so we're going to go back and uh, do it a little more slowly, and maybe these pictures will help. So the problem is that we have um, we, we've computed this force. We'll call it F here, uh, and and we know it's at it's at some angle, uh, and uh, we want to rewrite this F as the sum of force in the X direction plus force in the Y direction. All right, so um, what else do we know? We know we've computed distance, and we know that the distance is based on distance in the X direction and distance in the Y direction. And in fact, the angle uh, over here of the of the force is the same as the angle of the uh, distance, the, the difference between uh, x y and mouse x mouse y. So because these angles are the same, we know that that these two triangles are similar and everything is proportional. So uh, it's just a question of finding the factor to multiply by that will take us from this triangle, which where everything is known, to this triangle where we have two unknowns, fx and fy. All right, and, and the, the factor that we need is uh, simply f over d. And that's, that's what this is supposed to illustrate, that if we take, um, well, all right, so we take, we take all the dimensions on this triangle we multiply everything by f over d, we're going to end up, still end up with a similar triangle. And this term, you can see d times f over d is just f. So this becomes f. And uh, these remaining terms are what we were looking for over here, trying to get fx and fy. All right, so, so uh, it's actually a pretty simple if you uh, work through it and you see the geometry here. So I'm going to put these, translate these into code. Uh, remember that fx is, is the distance in the x direction. So that's going to be 
x minus mouse x, and we multiplied by f over d. Uh, we do the same thing in the y direction, scale it by f over d, and so now we've decomposed uh, this force in the direction of this distance that we computed. Uh, we've decomposed it into x and y, and so now we can apply x and y to update velocity, and let's run it and see what happens. Oh, I see. I wrote x instead of px, so let's put px py, and we'll load this thing, and now we have this uh, particle that's running away from the mouse, um, and then to make that a little more, perhaps a little more clear, I'm going to draw a line from the particle to the mouse. Okay, so, so you can see that the force is being applied in the direction away from the mouse along this along this line that's being drawn and uh, the inverse square law is in action the closer I get uh, the, the stronger the force and it's um, quite a bit stronger as in fact it becomes uh, infinite if if I could actually approach I mean actually get to the point which could cause some problems in you know how where does infinity come from it's back here, we're dividing by d squared. So if distance is zero, we're dividing by zero, uh, which, which would be a problem. So sometimes in particle systems, you want to do something like, uh, well, we could say d equals the max of one and d. So if d ever got to be zero, it would be replaced by one pixel, which would still generate a sizable force, uh, but might prevent some overlaps. All right, so uh, if we wanted to go from this to a particle system, uh, we would, of course, have to put all of these uh, velocity and uh, position and other information into objects to make particles. And to apply the force, we would loop over every particle, and then we have a nested loop. So for each particle, we look at every other particle and compute the force. And then we just sum up all of those f of x and f of y forces to get a sum f of x, f of y. That's called the superposition principle, that you can just add uh, forces if they come from independent objects. And um, that would create the uh, velocity update for each particle, and um, then you could have a swarm of particles that are all pushing against each other, reacting against the walls of the canvas, or anything else you wanted to implement.